Uh, I'm Deb Krauss, uh, president of Eden Seminary, and I'm here with my uh, wonderful colleague, uh, many years on the faculty, uh, Clint McCann, who is our evangelical professor of biblical interpretation. If you had a uh, kind of single purpose to your teaching, to your understanding of the Bible, not only for our graduates, but but for all people uh, in in the church, how would you, what would you hope for them as interpreters and readers of scripture? But I really want people to come away from scripture with what I call a, a missional identity. That is to hear and see uh, a God who has invested and does invest God's self in the entire creation and its well-being, including the well-being of the whole human family. Now that's a big mission. If you even begin to toy around with that kind of mission, you will never be bored. People come away with the Bible with a sense of excitement uh, and energy and motivation uh, to join God at God's work of changing the world from the way it is out there uh, toward the way that God intends it to be. Think about your teaching in this regard, Clint. Courses you teach, and really even more than just individual courses, your objectives as a teacher, helping to uh, empower and uh, form leaders for the progressive Christian movement. What is it you want them to have as biblical interpreters and teachers in their ministries? I, have, I hope for them to have a vision of the whole. People who have a certain body of knowledge at their disposal, biblical uh, tradition, theological traditions, uh, pastoral uh, uh, sensitivities, uh, all of that is, is vitally important, uh, that sort of shaping or formation in order that we can act uh, uh, justly uh, and love kindness or God's love and to walk humbly with not just with God, but with each other. I mean, I'm thinking of you as a person who in your own faith embodies in our community, um, you know, walk in that talk in terms of the commitments you share with the community. This past month, uh, October, was the ninth annual Eden uh, Seminary Festival of Psalms. And, and what does it mean for you? The Psalms have this expansive vision of God and God's purposes in the world, so that the an act of praise uh, and praise is what the uh, book of Psalms is named in Hebrew, is praises, tehillim. Uh, to praise God means to invite the world into God's congregation, so that praise becomes not just a liturgical act, uh, something we do in church or synagogue, uh, but praise becomes uh, an act of submission to God's purposes in the world. That's why the Psalms regularly invite the whole world to praise God. Church World Service uh, is both an ecumenical organization that works uh, in an interfaith manner uh, for the service of the world. Church World Service is one institution uh, that represents that, um, that reality and that activity. My, I want our students to know, uh, so that part of the crop walk is, is to, to help people realize that we're, we're part of organizations and institutions bigger than ourselves, bigger than our denominations, uh, and all together in the service of the world. I have an imagination for how we collaborate with other organizations, how we're a part of a network. Thinking of international partners and mission and the, the way you've shape your leadership in the travel seminars. I want my identity and our students' identity uh, to be formed in conversation with other peoples, other cultures, other ethnicities, other nationalities, the world. Uh, and uh, that's part of our curriculum. Uh, part of our embedded uh, goals are to work with uh, people of faith or no faith toward the enactment and embodiment of God's uh, purposes in the world. And we've done that in Nicaragua. We've done that uh, in El Salvador, uh, where IPM works and has facilitated two of our Eden seminars. We've, we've traveled to Cuba with an Eden group. And again, it, it's just absolutely essential that we form our identities uh, in a world context. Failure to do that. I'm afraid uh, is going to endanger humankind and the earth itself in the, in the, well, I say the long run, but it may be a lot shorter if we don't learn how uh, to think 
and act and work together, we're, we're in deep trouble. Uh, it seems to me, uh, we disappoint God, uh, we hurt ourselves, we hurt our, each other, and we hurt the earth itself. Tell us what's what's cooking in your scholarly work. Your book on the Psalms this time around is almost an embodiment of our third infused goal. We talk about vocational resilience as a capacity right. for leadership, and, and the Psalms are really a resource for that. So this recent manuscript, which is short, and like everything I write, intended to be comprehended and used uh, by people in the church as well as in the scholarly community. The Psalms for justice seekers and peacemakers, uh, and reading them uh, explicitly with what uh, they say in terms of inviting us into God's mission uh, of justice and righteousness and peace. In fact, uh, uh, I, I, I frame this in terms of spirituality. The, and I use the Eden paper that was written sh soon after I came to Eden. And we define spirituality not in terms of practices that we do, but we define spirituality in terms of God's work of righteousness in the world justice, in other words. So what does it mean uh, to practice our spirituality? And of course, the Psalms are a locus of spirituality in, in our Reformed tradition and many traditions. What does it mean to practice our spirituality uh, as uh, enacting God's justice or joining God at God's work in the world? Well, Clint, thank you so much for this conversation. It's, a, it's an exciting uh, array always of your scholarly and uh, social justice and ministerial and teaching endeavors in our community. And uh, it bears so much fruit. Uh, it's always good to talk to you about that. I am Eden, I am a psalmist, and I am an internationalist. <laughs>